Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the regular city council meeting for May the 21st. I'd like to ask everybody in the audience that can to stand as we start every meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag for the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Gardner is home ill, so he won't be joining us tonight. Okay, ad agenda additions to lesions council. Um, you have in front of you a revised um, 0318 that includes the uh, changes that we made last week and the thing. So we'll sub that'll be a substitution for when we get to that point to, to substitute that for the, the document that you had in your package. Um, okay. Uh, we have anybody sign up for system participation? No, sir. Okay. Uh, city boards and committees, uh, um, Ms. Glass. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to make a motion to appoint Ms. Natalie Aguilar to the Arts Committee for a two-year term. Second. Moved and seconded by Mr. Marcus. Any question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Dr. Trout. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I move for appointment Lisa Hankel to the, uh, as an alternative member to the Board of Personal Appeals. Second, Second by Mr. Wolf Land. A question on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Ms. Hankel and. Um, Mr. Mayor, Ms. Aguilar is absent, so we'll have to swear her in. Okay, Ms. Hankel. Come on up front, please. We haven't lost anybody. Well, come on up here. We're going to make, make you get close. <laughs> we haven't lost anybody in a couple of weeks, so we're all right. I'm going to ask you to raise your right hand, and after I say aye, if you would follow with your name. Thing. Aye. Do swear or affirm I swear. that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And, I will be faithful. and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And, and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will. To the best of my skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully, without partiality or prejudice, execute the office of member of the Board of Personnel Appeals, according to the Constitution laws of the state. Congratulations, man. Thank you very much. I want to say hi to everybody. Thank you very much. There sure. used to be some stanzas in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we've got a couple of events coming up. On the council. All right. Um, just under council announcements, I want to remind everybody that this week coming up is uh, the big Memorial Day recognition um, in the city. Saturday will be our, our community parade. Uh, Sunday night we'll have a concert and the park starts at 7, I believe. And then Monday morning at 11 we'll have the, the more somber ceremony up in the, um, you know, the, what do you call it, Memorial Park in Old Bowie. And that starts promptly at 11 a.m. So we'd encourage everybody to participate. Um, so looking forward to decent weather too. So uh, we'd encourage you to participate in all of those. Uh, Mr. City Manager. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, point out that we make three significant hires. We've got a new deputy director in public works, uh, a new uh, building maintenance manager, and, and, and we have an HVAC uh, technician on board. And we'll send you emails out with their names and data, but we were very successful in, uh, in recruitment. So thank you. Thank you. All right, um, Council, your consent agenda, items A through E. Do I have a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by uh, Mr. Dalton Wolf Wolfley and Mr. Uh, Marcos. Any question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Old business approval ordinance 0418, authorizing the purchase of a parcel of land owned by the Maryland State Highway Administration. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. For the record, Joe Minert, City Planning Director. Before you this evening is Ordinance 0418, which involves a land acquisition proposal in Old Town Bowie. Um, the city is interested in acquiring a 0.51 acre public parking lot located on the southwest side of Maryland 6 564 on the northern side of the Amtrak Railroad Corridor in Old Town Bowie. 
Uh, this property was acquired, it's actually uh, land that was acquired by State Highway Administration at the time that the bridge was reconstructed over the Amtrak line in the 1980s. Um, since the construction of the bridge, uh, the city has improved and maintained the public parking lot in this area, uh, spending a considerable amount of funds to do that. Um, we believe that it would be in the city's best interest to acquire this property since we have maintained it for years and we've made an uh, offer to the State Highway Administration. They uh, appraised the property in the sum of uh, $123,000 value. Um, and through negotiation, staff has obtained an agreement with the Office of Real Estate to sell the surplus property to the city for $99,000. Uh, the ordinance 0418 lays out the uh, background and the rationale for the acquisition. City ownership of this property will allow the city to negotiate future development agreements to ensure that new development or redevelopment provides the kind of structures that the city wants for this area of Old Town Bowie. And also that the city ownership of the property will ensure that there will be public parking available to enable the businesses to succeed in Old Town Bowie. So there are strategic reasons for this acquisition. Uh, finally, uh, the uh, council does have a land acquisition policy and we find that the, uh, the proposal is consistent with that policy in terms of preserving open space, allowing the city to influence a land use for a particular property, to facilitate redevelopment or revitalization, and be in the best interest of the city as determined by the city council. Um, tonight's public hearing was advertised. We, we introduced the ordinance um, on uh, May 7th. The public hearing tonight has been advertised properly and uh, staff recommends uh, council hold the hearing and approve ordinance 0418. Thank you. Uh, anybody sign up to speak? No, Mayor, no one has signed Declared up. Declared public hearing being completed. Questions of staff? Questions? Any questions of staff? If not, Mr. Staff? Great, uh, I'll just preface uh, my motion just by uh, thanking staff for their work on this. Uh, this little parcel of land's been uh, a focus of ours for some time. We all definitely know, and I know some of our state lawmakers are here tonight, that Old Bowie uh, is going to be a long-term challenge, especially as we look at retail and redevelopment in that area. I know Councilman Marcos and I uh, have, have had meetings with constituents on this exact issue in that area before. It's something they're all interested in, and this move will help give the city some additional leverage uh, to be able to determine, you know, what, what we can potentially do down there in the future. So with that, I'd like to thank staff again and a move. Uh, to adopt ordinance, uh, ordinance 0-4-18. Second by Mr. Wolfley. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Um, item B, adoption of constant yield tax rate, uh, FY219 budget ordinance 0318 and capital improvement programs R2316. Mr. City Manager, comments? Mr. Mayor, we've uh, presented in the uh, amended ordinance uh, documents that, that you submitted all the changes and adjustments that, uh, that came, came out of last week's meeting, and, and we are prepared to... Uh, let me give you the bottom line here. Well, we've made several adjustments. If you look at the document itself, you'll see that... Uh, Beginning at page one, you'll see adjustments with deletions and, and additions based on the documents, the points that we agreed on last week. And you'll see that we've, uh, the total revenues associated with this particular budget, instead of being 59,885,700, will be 57,723,900, which, uh, which is consistent with a, uh, tax rate of 40 cents per 100 and therefore we recommend you approve this budget and we move forward with it in the next year. Okay, thank you. Do we have anybody sign up to speak? Yes, sir. All right. As I call your name, if you would come up to the podium and identify yourself for the folks at home. Uh -huh. oh, our old friend, Verna Teasdale. Welcome, ma'am. One of the, the great stalwarts in education for the city and one of the great members of the city uh, the school board for us over the years. Thank you very much for your service. Welcome tonight. Oh, thank you. You're too kind. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the city council. I'm here this evening as a Bowie homeowner concerned about the council's 
unwillingness to make even a small incremental increase in the property tax rate and your willingness to deplete the fund balance. A city goal is to, quote, ensure long-term financial stability to meet current and emerging needs. Further, the goal's outcome is to have, quote, solid conservative annual budgets where operating expenditures do not exceed operating expenses. The city's expenses have exceeded city revenues in the past two of the last three fiscal years. The FY19 budget is no exception. And the city forecasts indicate that expenses will continue to exceed revenues. In the face of rising expenses, the council has prided itself on not raising property tax rates for eight years. Frankly, those of us who paid the taxes have not objected <laughs> until now. The council has found an easy way to cover expenses. You've begun siphoning money from the fund balance. Nearly $4 million in FY18. For FY19, you plan to extract $6.7 million? What difference does it make? After all, the city hasn't had a major catastrophe yet. The looming catastrophe is the fund balance. On the current trajectory, the, ba the fund balance will be depleted from $37 million now to four, under $4 million in FY24. $4 million is not enough money to even cover the FY19 expenses, not to mention what the expenses will be in 2024. Additionally, the FY24 fund balance will be depleted to 5% of expenses, not the 25% which your policy dictates. You experience the effect of refusing to modestly increase the tax rate when you told the city manager to remove over $2 million of budgeted items from the FY19 budget. Then you realize that not all those items should be eliminated. Certainly staff must hold expenses in check, but you must do your part. Unless you begin to approve small increases in the tax rate now, you will be forced to significantly increase the tax rate soon. As a taxpayer, small increases over time are easier to handle than getting whacked with a major increase. The $105 a year that a three cent rate increase would cost the average Bowie homeowner is the equivalent of two Starbucks Grande coffee mochas a month. I think Bowie is worth more than two cafe mochas a month. I hope you do too. Thank you for listening. Thank you, ma'am. We really appreciate your thoughts and, and the effort that went into that. Appreciate that. Uh, that's all. That's all I have signed up to speak. So I was clear, public hearing to complete it. Um, questions. All right. Then you have before you um, recommendation of adopting constant yield tax uh, F19 budget ordinance 0318 and capital improvement resolution R2318. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that council adopt O-3-18 with the changes, keeping the tax rate at point. 4%, uh, and with the uh, changes that were uh, were uh, amended. Okay. Second by Mr. Marcos. All right. Any questions on, on the budget? Anybody want to make a comment on the budget? I just wanted to say a big thank you to staff uh, for meeting uh, our request for keeping our tax rate flat uh, in fiscal 2019. I want to say a huge thank you to Mayor Robinson uh, for your leadership on this uh, and, and uh, uh, identifying cuts that we could all get on board with. Uh, and I just want to thank all my colleagues, uh, Councilman Glass, Councilman Marcos, Dr. Trout, uh, Mr. Wolfley, and uh, Mr. Gardner's not here tonight. 
uh, for your support of this budget. Uh, this does what residents have been asking us to do, and uh, I'm very glad that we're on the same page with this. So thank you all. Mr. Wolfley. Uh, thank you. I'd like to thank staff and the colleagues here as well. Uh, with my most recent uh, run uh, for, uh, for the current position I'm holding, I uh, spent a lot of time door knocking, and this was one of the things that kept coming up time and time again. Uh, it was very near and dear to people's hearts uh, about keeping a, uh, a flat tax. Uh, so I do uh, greatly appreciate everybody's effort in uh, bringing that to fruition. So thank you all. Dr. Trout. This was a hard budget. Uh, it brought out a lot of uh, challenges for us to undertake. Uh, it was one that uh, even though we, we heard from a lot of the citizenry that they wanted uh, the taxes not to increase, but there were still other carrots that the citizens wanted and did not want that I'm not sure if we fulfilled the obligation that the citizens asked us. I will say uh, a big thank you to the city manager and the staff for working with the council to try to come up with a budget that is balanced, which we are mandated to do. We're not like the federal government where we can do deficit spending. So in that area, we did achieve what we were supposed to do, a balanced budget but what is the price on how we got there? Thank you, Mr. Marcos. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Just want to thank staff for all their hard work and, of course, all the departments and everybody that weighed in on, on their sides and uh, my colleagues and especially the people of Bowie. Thank you very much. Ms. Glass. I'd like to thank the city manager, our staff, um, you, Mr. Mayor, and also my fellow council colleagues. This was not an easy, easy budget, as um, my colleague, uh, Councilman Trout, just stated. Um, but a lot of hard work went into this, and especially um, to Mr. Mayor and to our city manager and his staff for finding ways to um, to not have a tax increase, even though that wouldn't have been completely unreasonable after eight years, but finding ways that we could save money in different areas and make different priorities. Um, I think this was a wonderful balanced budget and a great exercise and compromise. So thank you all again for your hard work. Thank you, ma'am. All right, and then on my behalf, I'd like to uh, also thank council for their willingness to jump in. We, and as Dr. Trout mentioned, this was some, there were some challenging moments in this process but you all proved up to the task and then uh, you know sometimes it's uh, uh it does pose some challenges but um, um i'm really pleased with the professional and civil attitude you guys all brought to this project um and i'm going to support the budget proposal as it is i think it's um, it continues our trend of balanced conservative budgets uh core services the most important part of our process is carefully funded um the um, budget makes room for some some small growth in uh, public public safety and in and, and, and public works but i think this is a sound budget and uh, i i am constantly uh reminded about the the, the value of the uh, the staff every time i look at these documents uh, mr lott on behalf of all of them i want to thank you for your leadership um with your staff your finance the, the the most eloquent finance staff we ever have um uh, He's like the what was that old old commercial about the the um, investment company when he talks people listen he doesn't talk very much but what he says is important um, I, I'm I'm really proud of uh, the way um, you guys have put this th together and and I think this um, moves us forward and uh, I'm just looking for another outstanding year with that you have a motion and a second to adopt uh, uh, FY219 budget ordinance 0318 and cap improvements program. Um, and the uh, constant yield tax. So all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you all very much. Um, item on A on the new business. Um, we are very pleased tonight to have not only our out, the, the, the most outstanding lobbyist in, in Maryland who works for the city of Bowie, he's brought three outstanding people with him that he will introduce to me, but I'm going I'm to sneak off him. I'm going to introduce him. We're, we're very proud to have with us tonight my favorite senator, uh, Senator Doug J.J. Peters, who 
uh, has proven to be an, uh, an incredible representative for us, and two dynamic members of the House of Delegates, Chairman Joe Valerio and Delegate Geraldine Valentino Smith, who have never, ever failed to return a call or responded uh, with, with prompt uh, help and assistance and guidance and has made us feel totally welcome when we walk the halls of Annapolis begging for money. Um, you guys have been, been a great team and we appreciate it. With that, uh, Mr. Lucci, if you want to start us off and then weave in your guest as you think. So thank, thank you, you very much, coming. Mr. Mayor, members of the Bowie City Council. Uh, this is the uh, 12th annual uh, post-session report that I've given you. Uh, the first 11, I told you how wonderful our delegation was, but tonight I, they are here. And so I'm not going to really tell you about what happened. They're going to tell you uh, what happened. I can tell you generally without giving away what they said, what they're going to say is that our Bowie bond bills were fully funded. I can tell you uh, that both Maryland Municipal League uh, initiatives were enacted, which does, it doesn't happen very often, and that the, the local bill that Bowie submitted was enacted without any real opposition. So it was a great year for Bowie, uh, but I'm going to allow our legislators to um, uh, tell us about them. But let me tell you a little bit about each one of them. Uh, Senator Peters is the Senate Democratic Majority Leader. Um, Prince George's County has not had a person in that position since the early 60s. Uh, so it's a huge thing. And he's also the Vice Chair of the Capital Budget Committee. Uh, Delegate Joe Valerio is not just the Chair of the House Judiciary Committee that everything having to do with a lot of areas goes through his desk or doesn't go through his desk. Um, He's also, I think, believe the most senior member of the Maryland House of Delegates, and he works just as hard as the most junior member of the Maryland House of Delegates, so we're very lucky to have him uh, representing us. Um, Geraldine Valentino Smith uh, is the vice chair of the Prince George's House delegation, and she is a member of the House Appropriations Committee, where all the important budget decisions are made in the House of Delegates. So we're very lucky. Uh, Delegate Holmes cannot be here tonight. He's in Ohio with his uh, family. Uh, he's the head of the subcommittee dealing with all housing and all real estate and anything having to do with property uh, goes through him. So we have four very senior, very effective uh, members of the uh, Maryland General Assembly. And so that's why I think is the re reason why we had such good results for, for Bowie this year. So let me turn it over to Senator Peters and he'll work it through and we'll go from there. Welcome, sir. It's good to have you here. Thank you. I also want to commend uh, your lobbyist who normally is twisting our arms, but uh, it's nice to see that he's uh, not in combat mode. But he does fight for you guys, works the hall, especially if there's some votes that you need. He knows a lot of people in Annapolis, and that makes a big difference for us. Um, I'm going to cover three topics very briefly and then turn it over to uh, Delegate Valerio, and then Delegate Valentino Smith is going to back clean up. Um, and as you know, Delegate Holmes is with his mom. She's very sick and he's from Cleveland, so he couldn't make it. So okay. he's a part of all this. He voted for all this and he's a great team member. Um, first of all, uh, Mr. Mayor and council members, you guys set the stage for us. Um, we have a pre-meeting. I know a lot of people don't know this and I think it's important to put this out to the public. We have a pre-meeting before session in the Bel Air Mansion and you lay out your game plan. And then we tell you, hey, we think this is possible. This one's going to be really tough, but we're very realistic together so we don't elevate expectations. And I think that's why you've been so successful, as, as uh, Len mentioned, that, you know, we set the targets and we hit the targets. Um, and then, you know, towards the end of session, we have another meeting and we do follow up. And, um, you know, we, we basically, you know, if we do what we say we're going to do, we get fed. And if we don't, you don't feed us. So we, we understand the drill, so we usually get fed, which is a good thing. Um, so a couple things that we need to keep our eye on. Number one is um, the education funding. Now, I know you've said that the city doesn't build a school, they don't buy a book, but you do everything else. And I was here for the Excellence in Education Awards, and that's when you and I talked about, hey, you know, we should come back and do a follow-up for, you know, Annapolis Report. Um, so... What's happening now is that we have benefited as a county from the Thornton Commission very, very well. We have at least 60% of our kids that are on free and reduced meals in this county. We have at least 20% of our kids where Spanish is their first language. Now you think, well, that's not Bowie, that's other parts of the county. 
Northview is 45% free and reduced meals. I keep track of all the schools in Bowie and check them. So we are obviously all working together to give our kids a great education. So we get extra money for that than, than the other counties. Now, what's happened is that that uh, formula is going to expire. So they brought in Dr. Kerwin, who was the Chancellor of the University of Maryland. He reformed the committee, and they've had a number of meetings, and they're going to release the numbers here, I think, at the end of the year. But they gave a kind of a precursor to it, which was just for Prince George's County, we brought home $1.2 billion just for Prince George's County. It's another $600 million to keep us in front of the curve here. So we've got other jurisdictions that are fighting for money. I just gave you Prince George's money, 600 million. And so we're gonna need some people at the table to make sure we get our fair share of that money. We do get the most amount of money of any county or Baltimore City in the state of Maryland for Prince George's County. Second, we get the second most capital money. So we have another commission that was formed. You know, we love to form commissions in Annapolis, but as long as it results in money, I'm okay with it. And that's the Knott Commission. And they actually did a study and are trying to figure out how we can get ahead of some of these schools. As you know, some of our schools are over 50 years old. And after a while, you just can't keep replacing the boiler and it's inefficient. So there's another number that's gonna come out. I haven't seen it, but there's certainly gonna be more money required to help with our schools. Now, there's also gonna be something on the ballot, which is the lockbox question, and it's gonna ask you if you want the casino money to go towards education funding. So right now, the casinos are kicking out about 500 million together. Since they came into play, I think we've increased the budget almost triple that. So, you know, from when they started, so we put about 1.5 billion in the budget. But it'd be nice to have that dedicated fund. We already have that with the Transportation Trust Fund and we voted on that as well. A um, Couple of schools that are gonna benefit in FY19, which is what we're working on. Number one is the Bel Air Annex. Now we're the only, that I'm aware of, the only system that has a ninth grade school. And that came about uh, when I was on the county council and you were mayor. Um, and um, what happened was that Bowie was so overcrowded, we couldn't, couldn't take any more kids. And so that school was a swing school. That was a school set up where if other schools were getting reconstructed, people would come there and come to that school. So we were able to work together, the council, the county, and the state, and we were able to bring that school in as a ninth grade school. So holding on to that school has been a, a great asset for the city. But now we're actually gonna get another 6.174 million to do new classrooms and labs in that school. That's for FY19. In addition, we've all worked through the Tulip Grove situation. Um, finally, that's gonna come to fruition, and that's another 4.885 million in, in the state budget this year. So, you know, well over $10 million coming back to the capital budget, and I just mentioned it's 49.6. So that's a pretty good, pretty good haul for us. That's about 20% of the budget is coming back to Bowie. Okay, on, on other issues, um, things that didn't happen, which were good, we didn't lose the money for 197 this year. As you know, that got pulled out two years ago, uh, thanks to Len and, and uh, Bruce Beriano and others and, and you, everybody who worked hard for that, the delegates, we were able to keep that money and put it back in. So silence is golden on that issue. We haven't heard, it's moving forward, I just checked it today. And hopefully, you know, this has been going on for a long time, but hopefully we'll get that widened at some point, which is I know your number one transportation priority. In addition, another thing that didn't happen because this council was attentive um, was that the maglev didn't, you know, become a possibility here anymore. Uh, six routes, three of them came through Bowie. Um, we fought it. They basically folded. We still have an issue myself and Delegate Valentino Smith in uh, South Laurel. We do represent South Laurel, and they still have a portion that would actually wipe a few homes out. So we've continued our fight up north, and a lot of the Bowie residents have helped us there, and so I thank them for that. Um, but that's, that's out of our hair, which is a good thing. Finally, uh, Mr. Mayor, you're a veteran. I know um, we've got other veterans here. Um, and I just wanted to thank you for you know, all the veteran services, the Memorial Day Parade, and you've always recognized veterans are important in our community. I think we're a very 
veteran-friendly community. And so we were able to put through a tax deduction for veterans this year. Um, it was a $10,000 if you were 65 and older. We lowered the age to 55 and made it $15,000. And what we did is, you know, once you, when you make laws over and over, years and years, people have different ages and numbers, so we, we made them all comply with each other. So if you're a first responder, a firefighter, a police officer, we added corrections. And the veterans, they're all 55 and they're all $15,000 tax deductions. Before the numbers were at 60, 62, et cetera. So we made them all work together. So that obviously made the veterans community very happy. But thank you for giving me a few minutes. And at this time, I'd like to ask uh, Chairman Valera to come up and speak. much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I really appreciate being welcomed in the city of Bowie, which has done a great job of accepting me uh, from the other district that I was in before and coming down here. And uh, with your help, uh, I've been very, very, very successful. Uh, uh, not, long, not long after the session ended last year, the council and the mayor got together and got their wish list together or what they wanted to get out of the General Assembly, which was extremely important because you can't come in there on the last day or the first day of session and think you're going to put a bill and just send me a check at the end of the month, and that's going to happen. It just doesn't happen that way. So it was very refreshing to see that the uh, council and the mayor and, and their lobbyist, who was right on and gave, gave the list for exactly what it was and presented it. Not only that, they supplied the testimony to uh, back up the request. They don't, they, we don't pass bills in Annapolis unless they're shovel ready, uh, so to speak. And uh, as a result of the preparation that was done by the council and being ready to go forward with the project, we were very, very uh, successful, much more successful than I could ever dream of. I mean, uh, I, I thought we just did, did so great. We got $75,000 uh, grant to upgrade the Bowie Volunteer Fire Department which was well needed, and uh, it, 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 if we didn't get it from the state, uh, somebody else would be putting it and be coming on that budget that we would, you were just talking about. Uh, we got a $100,000 grant for the Bowie Emergency Operations Center, which was uh, historical, that we could reach in and get that money for, for, for a uh, emergency operations center. Uh, $200,000 was granted for the Bowie Senior Citizens uh, Renovation, which is, uh, as you know, in, in, uh, in this county and in Bowie's in particular, the senior citizens are treated like kings and queens. Believe me, the senior citizens. I mean, I, I ran into somebody when I was at the Senior Citizen Center with one of these functions we have over there. I said, hey, what are you doing down here? You living up in Marlboro. Yeah, I live in up in Marlboro, but I'm down here when it comes to for, for what I need. And he was one of those guys that was doing exercise and everything else. And he couldn't, he couldn't stop talking about uh, how great he was treated. Uh, even though he didn't live in Bowie, he was certainly using the facilities. And so it's a, a really a tribute to the council and the mayor that uh, senior citizens are taken care of uh, so well in this, in this area. We also got uh, $100,000 for a grant for the Boys and Girls Club to ensure handicap accessibility to the facility there. Uh, a $2.5 million for the Liberty Sports Complex multi-field sports facility economic development for our county is also part of the uh, budget. But I want to tell you about a few bills that I think are kind of important that would pass. Uh, Delegate um, Valentino Smith put in a bill. It came to Judiciary Committee. Of course, that kept her around at the Judiciary Committee more time than she was when she was on the committee. We did spend a lot of time down there pushing this bill. And it was a tremendous bill. And I'm going to tell you what it did. It's, and I was thinking of the mayor, the former police officer. He could spot a person that might be a little shaky and maybe should not have a gun, at, at least at that particular time, talking crazy, talking a little stuff. And this bill basically said a family member or doctor or a police officer can apply for an order to remove the, the, remove the uh, weapons from the person. And then he's, got, he's granted a hearing within seven days to make a determination as to whether he not, shall not get the, the instruments back or the, the uh, uh, 
the rifles and guns that he has until it's clear that the that the man is substantially at least in in uh, understands what's going on. But you know, we all walk around these days and see people say, "Well, I'd be kind of fearful if that guy had a gun at his house." And uh, so this thing, but but it, it, it is limited. It's not every time Dick and Harry can walk in and say, "Yeah, hey, I don't think that guy down the street ought to have a gun." It's got to be a family member, or the police department, or a doctor determines without him having committed a crime or anything. Uh, and uh, I, I have to give all the credit in the world to uh, Delegate Valentino Smith, which worked the whole committee over and got it out of the committee, got it past the House and the Senate, and uh, it was a great, great, great success. And they called it the uh, uh, Red Flag Bill, and it, it was very helpful, and I think it will be. And one other bill I just want to mention was the uh, James E. Proctor Scholarship. As you know, I was tied up with James E. Proctor for 25 years. What a great gentleman. What a gentleman. And, as we, and he worked very hard in the Appropriations Committee. He was vice chairman on the Appropriations Committee. The result, Bowie, Bowie received a lot of funding. It wasn't a day that didn't go well. Even he told me he took the chairman of, of the Appropriations Committee right to Bowie. And as a result of that, he, he always was very out front. And as you all may know or may not know, if those that do know, they named a building after him. And Bowie, he, he was such a great person and such a great help to Bowie University. He was a graduate from Bowie. His wife was a graduate from Bowie, and she has taken his seat in, in the legislature. And uh, so we, we created a bill that uh, sets up a, uh, uh, a scholarship program that gives them $400,000 a year for the historical black colleges in the state of Maryland. So I'm very proud of those type of legislation. I could go on and on for the bills that are passed this year, and I mean, we had a ton of, but I just thought I'd bring them up, bring you up to date on those bills. And it's a pleasure to be have the opportunity to be in front of you. I certainly will answer any questions if you have, might have one. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lance. You got that warm, glowing report from the chairman. But thank you for that effort, particularly. That, that, that's a serious common sense approach to things. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. It is always a pleasure to be back home, where Senator Peters and I began, too. And to watch you pass your city budget and to see the commitment to the core services, but that a budget reflects the philosophy of a city and the philosophy of those that govern it for its people. And so I commend you on passing the budget and do remember my time in those days. And to talk a little bit about Annapolis, um, which is a true partnership for us here. And I don't think all jurisdictions can express or exhibit the strength that we have with you here, closest to the people in local government, working with us at state government. And we do it with the word advocate or lobbyist, which would be Mr. Lucy and Mr. Bruce Berriano, who appear in my office. Mr. Lucci knows my office well, but keeps us on mark. There are, we did 3,125 bills introduced this session. Without having the city and of its advocacy efforts down there in the hallways, we could maybe lose track, but they keep us on mark as you do. Um, Mr. Mayor, we did bring home a lot and work together with the strengths that we have. And I do want to emphasize, uh, I think Senator Peters underemphasizes that he is the third most powerful man in the Senate. He will tell you he's the eighth most powerful in his house below the dog, <laughs> but in the Senate, he is the we third. We all know about that. He is the third, and it makes it a delight, and it creates a lot of ease for us as we work through the priorities we have for our constituents here in Bowie, along with Delegate Valerio as the chair and, and Delegate Holmes. And with that, you've asked, and we know the importance of highway user funds. We know that roads are one of your most important things, your pride here, and you have a lot of them. And Mr. Mayor, you worked as a very strong partner with the Maryland Municipal League, and I know you came to Annapolis, I know you spoke to the governor, and I know you made it clear of the importance of that. And as a municipality, I know we are one of the top recipients, almost close to a million dollars, that we will get uh, in restoration of highway user funds. Uh, Senator Peters and Delegate Valerio talked a lot about schools because we know how important that is. Senator Peters talked about the funding. 
I wanted to just ensure or ensure you and, and the people of Bowie that are watching that we all did take school safety extraordinarily serious this session. And so for the people of Bowie, we dedicated significant amounts of money for the people of Bowie and the people everywhere in Maryland, Prince George's County and everywhere. There's money to secure the physical surroundings of bills and capital money in place. There's money that's been provided for training, the training of the schools, the training of the teachers, the training of the students, and the training of law enforcement. There's been additional money put in for the very needed wraparound services to assess a child, a student that is in need of mental health services and make sure they have them, so a comprehensive set of wraparound services. There's been a lot of attention given to the need for SOR officers in the schools, and I know we know that well here in our city. The bills now and the policies and the funding will also talk about the schools that don't have SROs in them using the most immediate law enforcement agency. And so for our Bowie Police Department, what we want to do is work in partnership with you, them, and what the needs are here in the city for the schools that don't have SROs, what they think the extra needs will be for them, and how we can assist in making sure that that additional money that's in the budget for grants and funding also makes its way here um, for the safety of our schools and the Bowie Police and what they'll need. With respect to the hospital, the Prince George's uh, County Hospital, the new medical system, the regional medical system, it's coming, they've broke ground. It's going to be extraordinary for our county. And that same university system owns Laurel and the Bowie campus. They're doing an extraordinary job right now too and commitment to Laurel as they closed down a lot of the inpatient and created significant outpatient capacity. And they have made every attestation to those of us in the delegation here, the House and Senate delegation, that they will be paying great attention to the Bowie campus. And we'll continue to meet with them and make sure that the future plans are there to keep that campus operating at its best capacity for the citizens of Bowie. Mr. Mayor, you came down and sat five and a half hours, was it, or more, when you saw kind of the abuse of signage that started to occur with the evolution of medical marijuana. And when our city became flooded with signs that looked like they were a misuse of advertising and marketing, um, you came and you sat in Annapolis for many, many hours to help give some sense of understanding to the importance that any advertising in marijuana come with the greatest level of um, attestations like we expect in reg regular medical um, practice. And so I appreciate that, and we appreciate that. The senior gym, I do want to make a little plug. Now that my neighbor and my husband is going to qualify for that, they want the hours to be extended a little bit. <laughs> so in your next budget, you may need to look at the needs of the 50-something-year-old's uh, workout, but that can be for your next budget. So I just want to close in saying we talked about safety, we talked about education, we talked about the roads, we commended you. And what we want to say is this partnership we think is unique, we think it's strong, we treasure it, and we look forward to continuing it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate that. Mr. Mayor, I'm going to sum up by saying one thing, and that is we know we have fantastic legislators representing us in Annapolis, but we, we, we often don't recognize the fantastic staff that they have working for them, which without them, they cannot accomplish what they could accomplish, and I cannot, I wouldn't be able to work with them as easily. They have wonderful staff. Each of the four of them do. They have a very, a uh, lot of experience and, and very customer friendly. And so anybody who calls in has a very delightful voice at the other end of the phone, and people are able to help them out right away. And I think that's something else that needs to be recognized. And um, one member of the staff is here in the audience, Vicki Herman. I think we should recognize her because she does a wonderful job in Annapolis mm -hmm. working for uh, Delegate Valentina. So, so thank you all very much. Um, okay. well, we may have a great year. We may have some questions for you, but sure. before we get into that, um, I just want to wrap this kind of thing as a, you know, when I, when I talk to mayors across the this, this state and I hear about their relationships with their delegations and whatever, um, we are really blessed here. Uh, we really do have a team approach to things. Um, and like I said a couple of times tonight, you know, I, I have never come to Annapolis and not gotten a positive response and a helpful response 
a welcoming response and a, an agreement to work together. And we've tackled some serious problems in the past. Um, one of the ones that you guys have helped us a lot in this year is that highway user fund. Um, you know, we were talking about budget issues. Like um, in the previous administration, we 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 really got we lost considering we were getting. Um, I think our, our maximum we were at about three and a half million dollars a year. That was our share based on the formula. Um, a previous administration knocked that down to a hundred thousand dollars. And if you don't think it took a lot of effort to try to, to do that, because losing that money didn't make the potholes go away, uh, and all that other. So uh, council and everybody chipped in and the efforts, and the, and staff worked their, as well as they could, and when we made it happen. But over the last couple of years, you know, the legislature and the executive office have been willing to listen and work, and, and now we're on a path. This year, we're almost back to, well, we're about two-thirds of back where we, we were at our, our peak, but we're clearly on a pathway now, the, you know, to, to get us to where we were. Um, and uh, Mr. Valerio casually mentioned, you know, three or $400,000 in, in uh, bond bills and grant money that we received, but I want you to know that um, that is very significant. Uh, $200,000 is going to the senior center uh, to do some programs there. $100,000 is going to our, our police command uh, center. Um, and then uh, the Bowie Volunteer Fire Department, which we support and the staff support. So those are sometimes people don't see what this delegation does for us from time to time. I mean, they, they see the schools and they see all the other things. Um, one day we're going to see 197 finished. Uh, I, I have faith of that. Um, but some of these other things, a lot of times they, they don't get a lot of public notice and they don't get a lot of public attention. I want everybody in this room to understand, everybody here on this table understands how important that is to our financial security and our financial future and to the quality of life in the city. So for that, you know, on behalf of all of us, I want to thank you for what, you, what you've done and what you're going to do and what we're going to do next year. All right, anybody have a question for that, Mr. Stev? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, echo a lot of the mayor's sentiments um, and say a big thank you to our uh, state elected officials. I'm sorry Mr. Holmes uh, couldn't be here tonight, um, and to you Mr. Lucci, um, in particular dealing with constituent services, um, which is my biggest thing. Um, your offices I've worked with all, all three at different points, and Mr. Holmes is as well, and they're just consistently extremely helpful. Anything we've ever needed, you guys have been on top of it and been able to, to assist us where you know we reach the end of, of, of our jurisdiction. And so I just wanted to say a huge thank you. Uh, it is an incredibly positive relationship, and we're grateful to your offices for working so well with us, and it makes our lives so much easier. Thank you. I'll be very brief. I think the litany of accomplishments has been uh, remarkable uh, again, uh, and then it starts all over again uh, next year. Uh, so thank you all very much uh, for the hard work. It's, uh, it's, it's great working with you guys and a tremendous, uh, tremendous team. Uh, doing great service for the community and, and really doing a uh, yeoman's work for everybody. So thank you all so very much. I'd just like to thank the delegation. I was taking notes and in my notes, I'm writing down numbers. I'm just not even considering what 197 is, and that's a huge problem, project, which requires a tremendous amount of money. So we're not even going to put that in, into the mix of the dollars that I've already counted up tonight because we're talking about some serious, really serious money when we're talking about the number of dollars that have come in. I just want to list uh, uh, from, from Delegate Valerio alone, we got a half million dollars. It's over half a million dollars just from that list from him. I'm not talking about anything that the senator has said, which has monetary value there. A lot of dollars there, 60% education as far as the state. And we know that, we didn't know this, but we know now 40% of it is going to Northview. I would be interested to know if there's, what the figures are for Point of Ridge, since Point of Ridge is the only school uh, in District 4. So I would like to know that. And then when we look at other things that the delegation has done as far as the, the HUR, and, and, and I hate to repeat, you know, because the mayor doesn't like us to repeat, but he's already said it, but I got to, it's, it's significant. Because I do remember when we were paying, we were get, receiving, rather, over $3.5 million in HUR. And we went down to, the mayor said, I think he said 300000 100000 100000 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 
because I, I had on my brain 100,000, because that's what I the figure I was getting ready to say. So I misheard you there, but when you look at this, we spend, if you look at the budget, just look at the budget for road improvements. Everybody in this area says that they can tell which roads are city roads, state roads, and county roads. And how can they do that? Because the city roads are better. <laughs> And even though we didn't get that money that we should have received to help us continue the excellent service that we do as far as road maintenance and improvements, we didn't stop. That money still had to be spent. And that was, is a lot of where a lot of the, the money that we had in reserve was going from, was coming from, was coming from that reserve to take care of a lot of those, those issues because at no time that I've been on the council have we cut any core services. We've always raised them. And the emergency management is one thing that we really should hold our hat on because we've done an excellent job with the services, even though we knew that originally, and this is before I got on the council, we were hearing that, well, you, you're gonna get a police department, but you're gonna have to have a couple of tax increases. Not going to belabor that issue any longer, but we didn't, and we tried to do the best thing that we possibly can. And we only can do this when we work in concert with the representatives at the state level and also at the county level. And we've had tremendous amount of success in working with our representatives at both of those levels, especially the state level, because we have all three of you, all four of you, really, working to help us at the county level we do have the representative from our particular district over the last eight, 10 years that has helped us tremendously as well. So I want to say thank you and kudos to all of the delegation members. Thank you for helping us along in times of needs. Thank you. And thank you too, sir. Um, you know, council has heard me say that, you know, I don't, I don't want to embarrass Mr. Lucci, but you know, I want to tell you, I mean, this guy is an incredible treasure. I know we've all had the same experience. I'll walk down the hall in Annapolis with him, and we'll see a delegate or a senator coming back, and, and I'll say, who's that? And he said, well, that's so-and-so from district so-and-so. These are the committees he's on, and these are his children's names. And I mean, you got, you're a walking uh, Google. Uh, so I, on behalf of all, I want to thank you for the leadership that you provide for us over there, you know, the... Uh, lobbying effort that you, you present for us has, has been incredibly effective over the years, and uh, um, we'd like to thank you for that. You're very welcome. Thank you for tonight, and with that, Mr. Marcus, if you want to move us into executive thank session. You. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to move to adjourn and go to closed session under statutory authority to close session. General provisions Article 3-305B3 to consider the acquisition of real property for a public purpose and matters directly related thereto to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice. Second. Second by Dr. Trout. Any question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Unite. Unanimous. You off the sick bed. I, I wanted to <laughs> say something. Yeah. I was home.